Let's all stand up for the Word of God. Today, it's Philippians chapter 4, verses 8 and 9. Okay. We'll, all, we'll all read together. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, Whatever is honorable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. Amen. As the title says, As the title says, today is part five and the last part of God's power to change us. Okay, from the beginning of this year, in January, all of January, four weeks, we have done God's power to change all of us in here. And today, the last part is make choices that bring change. Make choices that bring change. You know, we discussed that all Christians need to change. Do you remember why? Why do Christians have to change? Why do Christians have to change? Anybody? We learned that we have to change. But why? Why can't we just stay the way we were before we were Christians? Why do we have to change? Anybody? Because we are no longer of this world, right? We are no longer of this world. We don't belong to this world. We don't belong to the way we were before. We can't be new until we change. So we have to change. Every living thing change. All of you sitting in here are changing. Your body is changing. Your bodies are growing. If you're not growing, it's probably because it's dying. We're supposed to change from infant to toddler, to teenagers, youth, we're supposed to grow. Anything that's alive must grow. So we're changing. Now we talked about four weeks before today. Okay, We're just going to go through it really quick. Number one, the first thing we learned, the first part was we need to have the desire to change. We need to have the desire to change. Why do we need to have the desire to change? Because John 3.16 says what? So whoever believes in Him, what? So, week was, we need to have the desire to change. John 3.16 says, whoever believes in him, what, shall not? I heard it, the answer. Somebody a little louder. Shall not? Perish. Okay. Why do we need to be, why do we desire? Because we're dying, we're perishing. If we continue the path that we're going, we're going off a cliff, right? 
So we need to desire, hey, I'm going in this path that's leading me to destruction. But I'm, okay, I need to change this thing. My desire to change. First thing, you have to desire to change. And what is the second thing? You have to utilize the tools that gave you, that God gave you. His word, prayer, and the Holy Spirit. Because we cannot change on our own. We need God to help us. Third thing we learned was we must believe that God's power can and will change us and that the change will make us happier. God says, seek you first what? Your comfort? Seek you first what? Your fun? Seek you first what? Your enjoyment? Is that what the Bible says? No. Seek you first what? Everybody. Somebody. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added unto you. Right? We have to know, we have to believe what we just said. If we seek God's kingdom first, all other things will be fulfilled. As a Christian, do you really believe that? That's the question. Seeking the kingdom of God, seeking God, things of God will fulfill me. That's what you have to believe as a Christian. Okay? Not only do you have to desire God, use God's tool, but you have to believe that God's, God has the power to change you and that change will make you happier. That if you seek the kingdom of God, everything else will be fulfilled in your life. And last week, the fourth week, we learned that we have to depend on the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit gives us the strength, the willpower, the ability to do all things through Him who strengthens me. He's going to give us the strength. There's nobody else that has the strength. You don't have the power to change. A lot of us try to change. And many of us give up our change. Many of us give up our New Year's resolution to exercise more, to study more, to be better at something. Because we don't have the strength. God, especially things of God, God has to give you the strength. Okay, so today, the last part is what? Make choices that bring change. Now we're finally getting to the doing, okay? Change is not just imaginary, right? Change is something you gotta do. If you don't do it, you'll never change. I can think about exercise all I want. Unless I exercise, it's not gonna change. So today, make choices that bring change. Nathan. How does someone who is bad at basketball become a good basketball player? Uh, I wouldn't know because I practiced a lot and it didn't work. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Not even uh, a little you bit? Become tall. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Jenna, how does a bad violinist become a better violinist? It's, it's like grind your life out. <laughs> <laughs> it's like practice. Practice? You. How does a bad ballerina become a better ballerina? They don't. They don't? Yeah. <laughs> you have to be born. You, get you have out. to be born with it. Yeah. You, you oh. have to be good, or you're gonna get kicked. Okay. Out. How about Daniel? How does a bad guitar player become a good guitar player? Okay. Glad you didn't say. It. I was born with it. <laughs> People may get information from reading books watching videos, listening to teachers, instructors, coaches, and pastors. But nobody, no pianist, no violinist, no painter, no athlete, no cook, ever got any good just by getting information, right? Nobody gets better just by listening. We must practice. We have to put in our hours. We need to put in our efforts. 
and we practice. You must put into action the information and knowledge that you have acquired. If you want to be more like Christ, you have to act more like Christ. You have to practice being like Christ. And doing things that brings change means that you have to make choices that brings that change. Understand? Hearing sermons and reading the Bible and acquiring knowledge and information does you no good until you put them into action. And action requires thinking about the choice that you're actually going to make. Okay? I want you to listen very quickly. This is the core of the message today. Think before you make any choice. How many of you think a lot? Okay, two, three, okay, four. Okay, we have four thinking people and 16 non thinking people. <laughs> How many of you think before you look in your cell phone? You have some time, you don't know what to do. Okay, let me see what I'm going to watch. How many of you actually think? Or is it more automatic? Do you think about what you're going to watch? Or you just kind of like, just go? How many of you think before you turn on the TV? I know Nate is going to turn on the TV with some thought. I'm going to watch what? The? My Little Pony. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Nate, I didn't know you were. <laughs> you had that soft side of you. <laughs> okay. Probably Super Bowl tonight. Yeah, Super Bowl. But many of us just turn it on, right? The problem with a lot of us is we do things without thinking a lot. You know what I mean? By the time you get up to the by the time you sleep, how many things do you do thoughtlessly? How many thoughts do you think without thinking about it? All these random thoughts coming into my mind, and I'm like, oh, I'm not open. I'm just, okay, bring it all on. Let me think about whatever the, Satan is doing. All this. Okay, I'll, I'll just take it all in. <coughs> Problem with a lot of us is we go through the day without thinking. And we thoughtless, do things, think things, imagine things in our mind. Because we do just simply do not think about them. I want you to think about what you're about to do and ask yourself, what choice can I make to bring change into my life right now? What, dis what decisions should I make right now so I could be in the presence of God? What would Jesus do if He was me right now? This is what we, this was like a fad for a long time. What would Jesus do? But it's still applicable today. Before you do something thinklessly, try to think. What can I do? What kind of decision can I make right now to be in the presence of God? What can I do to be more like Christ? What can I do to bring change into my life? Not my entire life. Today. I want to change myself today. Right now. Next time you feel yourself getting frustrated, upset, angry, and out of control, think and ask yourself, what am I going to choose to let myself get out of control? Or am I going to make a choice to keep myself in control? Am I going to make a choice to be humble, patient, and loving like Jesus Christ? How many of you have a hot temper? Qu quick fuse. Something just gets you immediately. Somebody says something, something happens. Thank you, my wife. <laughs> How many of you have quick fuses? How about you, James? Do you have a quick fuse? No, they have a long fuse, huh? It's a 
deal with these guys. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what? If you don't think about it, you, what you're going to find yourself, it doesn't matter how gentle of a person you are. You could be like Daniel. <laughs> but then you're going to find yourself, what did you say? Why is it? What did he say that to me? You know what I mean? A lot of us times, we get overwhelmed by feelings. And if you don't think about it, what's going to happen? Your feelings are going to just dominate your life. I got angry, so I'm going to act angry. I got hurt, so I'm going to say things to hurt you. We let feelings come and just dominate our life. Next time the feeling comes, I want you to think and ask yourself, am I going to choose to let myself be like this? No, 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 no. I'm the child of God. I'm in control. Holy Spirit, help me. Not to get frustrated. This is no big thing. Why am I getting frustrated over this? Holy Spirit, help me to be humble. You know, I'm getting angry because how dare he says that to me? You know, I'm above you. Does he think I'm below him? You know, help me to be patient. Next time you are tempted and are going to let yourself just fall and fail. I want you to think about it. Am I going to do what I know to be wrong? You know, the problem is this. All of you, okay, most of you, don't want to sin. Most of you do not want to disappoint God, right? Most of you don't want to break God's heart by you sinning, doing something that He doesn't want. But what happens? The devil tempts you one inch at a time. He doesn't come with you full blast, a little bit at a time. I gain a little bit of ground, a little bit of time. And by the time you notice yourself, you're sinning. How did I get here? I was over there. How am I over here? Because the Satan comes after you a little bit at a time. Do you know what I mean? When Satan, let's say, comes after you for lust, he doesn't come after you full blast with the biggest lustful thing, thing you could ever have in your mind. No. He starts with something smaller, something more innocent, something more cuter, and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And by the time you know what am I doing here? What am I thinking this thing? When Satan tempts you, I want you to stop and think. Am I going to let myself just fall? Am I going to let myself just sin? Am I, let, am I just going to let myself break God's heart? Or am I going to fight back? Am I going to be victorious? Because pastor told me, the Bible tells me, my teacher told me that Jesus already had victory. We sing about that all the time in our praise, right? Jesus already got victory. We are already victorious. Am I going to be victorious over this sin? To make choices that bring change, we must choose thoughts that bring change. Understand? To make choices that bring change, you must choose thoughts first. To choose our thoughts that bring change, we must meditate on the Word of God. I know what you're thinking. Oh, we're back to the QT again. We just can't seem to get away from the QT. I guarantee you, you start your morning. Like last week when I talked to Isaac too, I said, Isaac, in the morning, Let's do the QT. I know a lot of you do QT in the morning, and that's what's going to keep you going. It, that's, gonna, that's, what you, that's what's going to make you think. You start the morning with the Word of God, and this mindless, thoughtless things that come in, you could fight it with the Word that you read in the morning. You meditate on that Word, and then you think about God, because God is in your mind. And more you think about God, God is going to be, God's presence is going to be in your heart. 
we must not only have quiet time, we just have to meditate on the Word of God and pray to God. So, whenever you do something, whenever you feel something, whenever you think something, remind yourself that this is an opportunity for you to make a choice that will bring change to your life. Okay? Next time you thoughtlessly just pick up your phone, ha! Huh, this is an opportunity for me to change, to bring change in my life by choosing what? Not to look at this or look at this and pull up what? Bible app. My Bible app. <laughs> okay, I have it in front of me anyways. Why don't I do my Bible app today? Why don't I do my QT again? When you have a thought, what do you do? Ah, this is an opportunity for me. I should, what should I think about? I don't want to think about those things. Why don't I think about what I read in the in the QT this morning? Why don't I think about that? You take it as an opportunity to make a change in your life. And I guarantee you, you will change. You do this in your life, and you will 100% change. Every time you try to, something happens thoughtlessly, thoughtless doing, thoughtless thinking, thoughtless tempting, sinning, think and take it as an opportunity. Hey, I'm going to what? Make choice that brings change in my life. Can we do that? Not all of you desire change. And it's not okay. I'm not going to say it's okay. If you don't desire change, if you're not changing, it's a spiritual death. To be a Christian, you have to change. How do you become a Christian at the first place? What's the first thing you have to do when you become a Christian? We have to do this thing called what? Repent. How many of you have never repented? No, we all repented. Because if we don't repent, and your sins are not forgiven, you can't be with God, right? Now, the first, the very first thing you do to become a Christian is change. Repentance, what is repentance? I'm walking towards, God wants me to go this way. I'm walking this way. Repentance is what? It's not about, oh God, I'm in the wrong place, I'm going to the wrong place, I'm sorry, and I'm sorry, and I'm sorry, and I just keep going until I fall off the cliff. That's not what repentance is, right? Repentance is, I'm going to the wrong place, God, you told me I'm going to the wrong place, I'm going to stop. I'm sorry, I'm turn around, and I'm changing my direction. I'm changing my life. I'm changing my thoughts. And I'm walking towards God. The very first process of becoming a Christian requires change. Understand? If you don't have desire, this desire, then Christianity is not part of you. Even the first part of Christianity involves change. And you have to continue your change. Repentance is a commitment to change your values, your priorities. So it's a good thing. Should I stay home and just watch Super Bowl? Or should I come to church? It's a choice. It's a value. What do I value more? What's my priority? Am I going to worship God? Or am I going to worship Super Bowl? It's a commitment. I want to close today's message by recapping all five parts. One, know that God is good. God is loving. God is desirable. And desire God above all else. Seek ye the kingdom of God first, and all these things will be added unto you. Desire God. Use the tools that God gave you. If you don't meditate on His Word, if you don't pray, you cannot change. Number three, believe that God can change you, and you could actually be happier with God than without God. 
Number four, depend on the Holy Spirit because He can help you to do all things through Him who strengthens you. And today, make choices that bring change. As we close, I plead with you to take Jesus seriously. Christianity is not a joke. You have to take Jesus Christ seriously. You have to take God seriously. You have to take your quiet time seriously as if your life depended on it. Because your life does depend on it. In fact, your eternity depends on it. Understand? I want you all to close your eyes, every one of you, close your eyes, pretty soon I'm going to call on the priest team, but right now everybody close your eyes, and I want you to think, do I actually want God in my life? I know He's good, I know He's loving. I know He loves me more than anything else. And I know that if I just do what He wants me to do, I am actually going to be happy that He's not a liar, that He is the truth, that if I do what He wants me to do, I will be fulfilled and I will not require anything else for my joy, my peace, my happiness. I want all of you to think about this. And I want you all to commit yourself to becoming a Christian. A true Christian who belongs to Jesus Christ. Who acts like Jesus Christ. Who desires Jesus Christ. And I want you to commit yourself to spending time with God in your QT quiet time every morning. Because if you don't have the Word of God in your heart in the morning, you will live throughout the day thoughtlessly doing things that God doesn't want you to do. Thoughtlessly thinking thoughts that God doesn't want you to think. Thoughtlessly imagining things that God does not want you to imagine. I want you to commit to that. I'm going to spend time with God, especially in the morning. I'm going to read His Word and I'm going to pray to Him all day. I want you to commit yourself to not thoughtlessly doing the things that this world, that Satan is trying to have you do. I want you to commit to, I'm going to live 24 hours a day thinking. I want to be a thinking person. I want to know I'm going to be a person that thinks about what I am doing. I want you to commit yourself to not losing your self-control. Not letting your feelings dictate your life, but overcoming it and telling your feelings how it should feel. I want you to commit to making choices that bring change, okay? Okay, priest team, if you could come up and have a little... Music. Okay, let's all continue our prayer. I want you to pray this prayer. If you do not have the desire to commit to God right now, that's okay. It's not your time. Just ask God to reveal Himself to you. But if you have committed yourself, if you want to commit yourself to this, I want you to really dig deep into your heart and tell yourself, you know what, June, I have to change. It's not acceptable for me that you live this way. I'm going to become more Christ-like. I'm going to be more loving God. I want to be living in the presence of God in my life. I actually want to be a Christian that looks like a Christian. right now and I want you to pray to God 
I'm going to take two minutes of silence and I want you to just pray to God and ask what? Depend on the Holy Spirit so you can do all things through Him who strengthens you. At this moment, I want you to say, God, I commit my life. I want to make choices to think about you. And I want the Holy Spirit to help me. And I want you to earnestly pray, pray for this. Let's take two minutes and I'll end with the closing prayer. Jesus Christ. 